Alberta was established as a farming community and the communities were vibrant. They were the center of economic, social and political life well into the 50s. The uh, United Farmers of Alberta formed the government in Alberta in 1921 and that government lasted to 1936. The mining, the oil job, the job in the city was the sideline. The farm was the basic fact of life. Oil and gas and agriculture have been in conflict with a strange result that both have expanded vastly. We live here now in a forest uh, island completely surrounded by vast tracts of agricultural um, lands that have been transformed from this very land. The tendencies towards agribusiness are antagonistic towards forest protection. The southern boreal forest, it's almost completely annihilated, which represents about a third of our province. Two-thirds of the province would be northern boreal forest, which still exists, but has been decimated in various places. On the so-called agenda of feeding the poor in other countries, they have convinced national governments, provincial governments, to have high agricultural inputs, which includes pesticides, biocides, We've increased all pesticide use. Oil and gas, uh, these are petrochemicals. The synthetic pesticides and fertilizers are coming from that industry. That's how they're produced. In Alberta, we've tripled the use of glyphosate in the last 15 years. They actually indicated this is probably due to genetically engineered canola. We are actually the world leader for irritable bowel disease. One of the causes of irritable bowel disease is exposure to an antibiotic, glyphosate is an antibiotic. They hang around for months and even years and some for decades and when they break down they break down into products that are sometimes even more harmful. There's also the fact that inactive ingredients enhance that toxicity of that pesticide. Some say up to a thousand times. There's uh, many pesticides which are um, neurotoxins. By their very design they're going to impact our nervous system. One of the pesticides that I'm more familiar with, chlorpyrifos, is considered to be harmful to 97% of endangered species. So, because it does impact mammals and their nervous system as well. And then um, impacting microbes in the soil will also impact things like the ability of that soil to take in carbon. Chemical fertilizers also kill microbes in the soil. There are salts and they emit nitrous oxide, which is a very potent greenhouse gas. And we're kind of moving more and more to a system where we're exporting and importing more food instead of growing it locally, which is a concern as well with just transportation of food. So everybody growing food locally, everywhere in the world, is a better thing to do. And it's what we all used to do. We've just gotten away from it because big business has encouraged that. The forces that are spending money on, on biocides are encroaching more and more on Canadian agriculture. It's a limited view to think that by growing more trees we can save the planet. That's not enough. We have to grow and create new forests and new habitats for a diversity of species. Now we are on a 20-acre plot of land. We reached agreement with two organizations that give us access to 800 acres of land and we hope that we will reach new agreements that give us the capacity to plant approximately three to five hundred million trees in the next ten years. The market has proven that it cannot resolve those problems over and over again. In fact, that's what got, it, got us into this climate change mess to start with. And broad-based decision-making and participation is the only way to go. In fact, it's the last solution.